Hi, it's Patrick with Above and Beyond Sewing and Vacuum. Um, today we're going to be showing you how you can actually do some applique uh, with your IQ designer. Um, you remember the last video that we did, we actually did applique where you actually were scanning in um, the artwork or the applique that you actually wanted to do and setting stitches to it. Um, this time we're going to do something a little bit different where we actually have our fabric um, cut and our shapes cut and um, uh, put down onto our fabric. Um, we actually use the Accu Quilt Cutter. You can see I've got a little cupcake here. This was our row by row theme for this year. And um, again, we got a little cupcake. We've got the Steema seam on it. We've actually got it fused to the fabric. And again, I'm going to show you how you can actually, rather than doing this by hand, we're going to take it through our IQ Designer and actually set our stitches. We're going to do a couple of different types also. So um, I'll show you uh, how much fun you can have. Um, through your IQ designer without having to do this actually by hand. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So first thing you want to do again is um, if you had an IQ quilt cutter you can cut out your shapes really really easy. Um, just uh, you're going to actually prepare your fabric first, put your steam -a seam down or double sided fusible whatever you're going to use um, and you'll run it through your cutter and it'll cut, cut your shapes out perfectly. And then of course you're going to take your iron and you're going to set them to your fabric and we're going to actually adhere the fabric, um, the applique shapes to the fabric that we're sewing out. So next thing that we'll do is we're going to run it actually through the IQ Designer. And this is where most people have problems or make their mistake. So you know, keep in mind again from if you watch my videos or come to the classes that we teach here, you remember there's three different types of um, scans that we can do with our IQ designer. So I'm going to actually touch, we're going to actually work on the Solaris, um, this uh, first project here, and then we're actually going to show you how to do this on the Destiny. For you Destiny owners, we're going to show you how to do it on the Destiny also. Um, so for those Destiny owners, don't worry about it, we'll get to that here in just a little bit, but um, we are going to start on the Solaris. Um, Again, you can see we've actually got our IQ Designer tab down here on the bottom when you open your, your machine up. Um, and we're going to go ahead and actually go in and tell the machine that we want to physically scan in an item. That's with this little flower tab up at the top here. You can see I'm actually using a mouse. Um, the mouse I, I'm, is much my preferred method when I'm working especially with the Solaris um, because the, the pen that we have here it's really hard to tell when we actually touch those, those buttons and it's not as sensitive as my mouse is. So I highly invest in investing in a really inexpensive mouse. It needs to be a corded mouse that you can plug into the side of your machine. And again, it makes it so it's really easy to manipulate this machine. So again, we've got three different scan options on here. Um, one of them is actually called the image scan. And the image scan, what it's gonna do is it's actually going to just take a picture of our fabric so we can actually manipulate the fabric. We're not trying to set any stitches to it or anything like that. It's just taking a picture. Um, the next one, of course, is the line design. That's when we actually, what we did the last time with our, um, uh, with our applique, we had a line image and we wanted to tell the machine to actually read the lines and try to set stitches to it. The third one is the illustration design. We'll do that in another video, but again, that's when we actually want to recognize color with the inside of a design also. For this particular function, I'm actually going to use the image scan because all we want to do is take a picture of our fabric and, um, uh, and then we're going to actually physically set an area manually around that, around that design. So I'm going to touch the image scan button and then I'm going to just tell the machine that I want to scan the, our, this particular hoop into our machine. Touch that. I'm going to hit OK. And it is going to take a picture of our cupcake here. You're going to notice when it finishes, you can actually, hopefully you can see this on the, on the video, but again, we've got a really nice clear image of our, of our cupcake here. Now, if we wanted to make that image either lighter or darker, depending on what we were working on here, I can actually utilize these, these little leaf patterns up at the top here to illuminate that image a little bit more, or if we want to see what we've done at, on the drawing, we can actually go all the way where we could turn that image off 
So again, just by manipulating this button, I'm of course going to be working with this cupcake, so I want to be able to see it pretty well on the screen here, and I want you guys to be able to see it on the screen also. So, so from here, what we're going to do is actually set the area that we want these stitches to, um, to sew out in. And again, we're going to physically um, uh, go around the design one click at a time in, to order, in order to set our area. Now, if we're doing this, again, what I'm going to do with my cupcake here is I actually want the um, uh, cake portion, this, the brown portion of this, I'm going to do it as a, a blanket stitch or a true applique stitch. Um, on the um, cake portion on the top or the frosting portion on the top, I'm going to actually do that as a satin stitch. So when you're actually doing this in your machine, I want you to sort of analyze exactly how you would actually sew this out if you were doing it by hand. And you're going to do it in that particular order when you're doing it on the machine. So in this instance, again, I want to set my blanket stitch first. We're going to go all the way around our cupcake with our blanket stitch. And I'm going to simply do that by going up. This is our line images function on the machine. So I can click on this little sheet of paper. We then can pick the type of stitch that we want. I'm going to pick a color that I want to set around it. And I'm also going to pick what we call our point-to-point -point tool. So this is where it's going to allow me to choose the points of my machine, which is the little squiggly line up at the top here. That's in our line properties box. So I've got my blanket stitch picked. I've got the color that I want to do picked. And then I'm going to pick my point-to-point -point tool. From there, I'm going to click on OK. And now I'm going to start by clicking on this um, first point on this design. Now another thing that you want to utilize here is we want to utilize our zoom feature on this, um, on this machine. Again, we can actually zoom up to 1600% um, with the new upgrade, which is amazing. That's, that's a little bit overkill. Um, I'm actually going to do 800% for this particular feature. Once you do that, you can see it zooms in on that entire, um, and so again, it sort of distorts the image a little bit, but we can actually scroll or pan um, on the Solaris using this little um, hand. If we have it illuminated, we then can take that design and we can physically move it to the part of the design that we want to work with. Now you can see, again, I'm blowing up 800% here. So when I'm actually doing this, I've got a really good view of my stitch line. You also can see, because I'm at 800%, I don't have to be absolutely perfect on my stitch alignment because it, um, it's so magnified that if I'm off a hair, when I go back to 100% on this, you're not even going to be able to tell. So I'm going to pick a, a really nice starting point, which is going to be right up in the corner here where the um, red actually matches up with the, um, with the brown. And I'm going to start my first point here. I'm going to click on my point to point tool. I'm going to click on the design and you're going to see a little red box come up. Now this is another really cool thing that you can, you're going to have to get used to. When we click on this design, you can see I've got a red line that comes out of my screen here. And I can, if I don't let go of that left click button, I can manipulate this line wherever I want to. As long as I don't let go of that left click button, I can make it smaller, I can make it larger, I can actually move it around my design. Now once I let go of that um, mouse, the, the, um, the click on the mouse, it's going to set that stitch alignment point for me. So I let go of it, now I'm going to go down to my next point, and again I can do the same thing here. I'm going to go down to the next point, and you can sort of see, and again as long as we don't let go of that, it's going to be able to let me line that stitch exactly where I want to be. Do it one more time here. Then we're going to go back up to our panning tool and we're going to move further down that design. And we're going to again click on our point to point and we're going to move further down here until we get this design all the way. Now you can see we've actually got a little bit of a corner here. So I'm going to make my points a little bit smaller so I can get around that around that edge and it be a nice clean edge.
And I'm gonna just keep on doing this and we're gonna keep panning through until I get this entire design or this entire portion of this design set and ready to go here. We're gonna go back up to panning and you can sort of get the, the process here. Now again, I'm gonna to go to the edge here and then I'm gonna make my stitch points a little bit smaller so I can get around that corner and then we'll go up the side here and we'll do the panning one more time and back to the point to point and we're gonna again just keep setting stitches and stitch points until we get back up to the top here and then I want to show you what I've actually done so again, I've now got this all set exactly the way I want it to be set. And we're gonna go ahead and um, go back to 100% on this. Okay, so now we've got this whole shape done. And again, I've taken it back down to 100%. I wanted to show you what we've done here. Again, we've um, created this entire shape here. Um, however, the machine, because we're doing point to point, the machine actually wants to finish this area off. In other words, it's going to connect the last point that I did with the first point that I did to actually make an enclosed area here. We actually don't want that to happen because all we want to do is show, um, uh, sew the blanket stitch around, of course, the outside of that applique. And we don't need it to go across this top section here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go up into the machine and rather than choose the blanket stitch, this time I'm gonna tell the machine the next stitch that I put down there, I want it to be a no sew option. So it's not gonna actually, it's gonna close the area off, but it's not gonna sew a stitch there. So again, we've selected the no sew icon here and now all I need to do is click on my point to point and I'm gonna click anywhere in this box here and again, you can see it makes a black line across there. So what that's gonna do is it's going to sew out this out as a blanket stitch, and then it's going to make this a no sew. So it's not gonna, it just finished the area, but it's not gonna sew anything out there. So, and we'll show you again how that looks on the fabric here. Again, you can see how it's gonna put that no sew option there. So from there, we're gonna actually go ahead and go into um, uh, digitizing the frosting part of this cupcake. And again, on the frosting part, I think I wanna put a um, regular satin stitch around the frosting portion of it. So we're gonna go up here and again, we're, we've got the no-so selected. This time we're gonna tell the machine, I wanna do just a regular zigzag um, applique for the, for the frosting portion of this. I'm going to choose a different color, which I'm going to actually make my purple here. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the stitch points all the way around the outside of the uh, frosting or the portion of this, uh, of this design. Again, I'm going to blow it up to 800% and we're going to go ahead and use our panning tool and I'm gonna to pan to the top of my cupcake here. So from there, I'm gonna to touch my, again, my point to point tool, and I'm gonna start in the middle of our cupcake up at the top here. And again, we just start a stitch point. We're gonna go down. Again, we can physically manipulate this, um, uh, this particular stitch point by just holding down on my mouse and we're going to do that one more time. And now I'm going to go to my panning tool again, and we're going to go ahead and pan down here. And again, make sure you highlight the point to point tool. And you can see how cool and easy this is. We're going to just set our stitch line all the way around the outside of this cupcake. And again, we need to pan a little bit more. We've got a little bit of a lip here, so I'm gonna make that a little bit shorter. And, oops, 
you can see I actually double clicked that. I didn't really want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and this is another wonderful tab here. This is my undo. I'm going to undo that last one that I just did because I didn't like it. And we're going to go ahead and try that again. So let's just keep on going here. And we've got a, these um, getting around the corners or the, the ends of this can get a little tricky because, again, you want to make sure that your stitch is, um, is lying pretty close to the edge of that fabric. Now you can see we're getting to the point now where we're um, going around the where we just did that no sew line. And if you wanted to make this the picture a little bit darker, which I do, I'm going to go ahead and darken that up a little bit. We're going to touch our panning tool again and we're going to keep on going here. And we're going to get short little points here to get around these circles. But again, it's really easy to control if you remember to hold down on that click and you're going to be able to manipulate those stitch points really, really easy. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and pan. And we're going to keep on going here. Again, we're trying to get around that corner. I want to make them really close together. We're going to pan some more. So you guys can sort of get this process. It's actually a pretty simple process. And again, when you compare this to how long it takes you to actually do this by hand, I think you're going to find that it's pretty remarkable. And again, if you're a novice sewer like me, where I, I wouldn't have a chance of getting around these circles doing this by hand. But with my IQ Designer, it looks like I'm an expert applicator, which is far from the truth. We are almost to where we can start doing this a little quicker again, so. And remember, we're blown up 800%. So when we are close to the edge of this fabric, we're actually really, really close. And so that's what you have to keep in mind. You don't have to be absolutely perfect here but you want to get it to where it looks like it's lined up with that with that material that you're trying to applique around. And again, we can also choose a length on our, I'll show you that here in just a second. We can choose a length um, or a stitch width on our um, zigzag that's going to make sure that we're covered well enough. And I'll, again, I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. I'm almost done with this cupcake, believe it or not. Oops, need to make sure I put my point to point tool back on there. And we're almost done here. And just one more pan I think is all I need. And you can see where my area is going to Gotta remember again that point to point tool. If you click on it and you start moving your fabric around, that's the reason you just forgot to touch on that point to point. And we got one more to do here. And again, because we have that point to point, it's gonna automatically close that section off. I'm gonna go back to 100% and I'm gonna get rid of that external image so you guys can see what we've done here. So again, we've got a blanket stitch going around the outside of our cupcake here. We've got a no sew line to finish that area off and then we've got a purple line that's a satin stitch around the cupcake itself. So now all we have to do is set the preferences of our stitches and sew this out. So it's that simple. We're going to touch, once we get that all set, we're going to touch the next option down at the bottom 
and it's going to ask us, okay, right now we're dealing with the satin stitch on the top of it. How, much, um, how do we want to make that? Uh, what width do we want to make that? You can see right now my machine is set to inches. I'm really bad about um, knowing what inches mean in stitch terms. So I'm going to actually go up to my settings page here and I'm going to switch my machine to millimeters instead of inches. That's on page 9 in your settings tab. So if you go to the, your settings and you go to page 9, you're going to be able to change your unit of measurement to either millimeters or inches. Again, I'm a big fan of inches when it comes to design size and things, but when I'm working with stitches, I like to switch it to millimeters because now it tells me that I've got a two millimeter stitch width on this. I actually want to turn that up to three millimeters. It also shows me on my, all I have to do, so I've got my, um, my zigzag set to three millimeters. I'm also going to change the density on this to 110%. So it's just going to make it a little bit more of a dense fill around that top of that cupcake. The other thing is I've got my blanket stitch set here. So all I have to do is click on that blanket stitch and now I can actually set the length and also the spacing. And this is the coolest part. We can actually set how much of a run we want over these blanket stitches. Right now I've got a three times thickness on that, um, on that run. I'm actually going to change that to five times because it will actually make that really jump out on my fabric when I'm doing my applique around that the cupcake portion of this. I'm also going to just um, I like the way this looks I might make that stitch width which is how big the bite is I'm going to make that just a tiny bit bigger we'll make it three millimeters neat thing about the Solaris is it's going to show you what that stitch is going to look like before you ever sew it out so we've got again a really nice little overview of how this whole design is going to look and we're going to touch the set option here which then is going to bring this over to our embroidery machine and it is now ready to sew out. It puts it exactly perfectly on top of where we want it to be. You can see um, the um, the stitch out on it is actually going to do the magenta first and then the vermilion so we can, um, excuse me, it's going to do the top of the cupcake first and then it's going to do the blanket stitch around the, on the second portion of that, of that design. Um, I'm actually going to sew this out here um, right now so we can actually see what it looks like. Um, I've got the machine, of course, I've got some black thread in there so you guys can sort of see how well it's going to sew out on this. And then I'll put some white in to do the frosting. So we'll do the blanket stitch in black and we'll do the frosting in white threads. Okay, so we actually um, were sewing out the um, frosting portion of the cupcake here and I actually put some white thread on there to do the frosting. I wanted to, it to be like vanilla frosting, I guess. So, and again, you can sort of see it's actually taking that design and it is moving it um, perfectly around the edges of that applique. Um, and this is how hard I have to work to do my applique. It's pretty awesome. So. Um, I'm going to actually let this finish stitching out. I want to show you that same process on the Destiny um, also. So we're going to, we just did it on the Solaris. The process on the Destiny is identical. The only difference is, again, that a Solaris um, uh, has a few more options when it comes to our stitch. Uh, the only option we really have on the Destiny to do this type of applique is um, uh, is to do a satin stitch applique. We don't have that blanket stitch possibility like we do on the Solaris or any of those decorative fill possibilities that we have on the Solaris. It's one of the cool things about the, the Solaris machine is you do have a lot of choices when it comes to your line fill options, um, when it comes to doing your applique. It's just a, a really a neat machine in that regard. So let's let this finish stitching out and um, we'll switch over to the Destiny here. 
Okay, so now we are gonna, um, same thing that we did on the Solaris, we're gonna actually come and do on the Destiny here. So again, I wanted to show you on the Destiny because there are a few features that are a little bit different, different ways to get into your stitches, different ways to, um, uh, to um, different icons. Um, they're a little bit more visible on the Destiny, so it's actually a little bit easier to find everything on the Destiny. But again, we're gonna go ahead and do the same little cupcake um, pattern on the Destiny so you guys can sort of see how to do that. Uh, again, what we want to do is prepare our fabric just like I told you. Um, steam a seam, make sure that it's all on the fabric. We're going to go ahead and go into our IQ Designer. Now again, keep in mind, um, with the Destiny there's a couple of advantages to it. The Solaris, the screen on the Solaris is a lot like your iPad screen where um, it won't actually um, allow you uh, to use a hard tip stylist in order to control it on the Solaris. However, on the Destiny, we can use a hard tip pen, um, which will allow us to get a little bit more, um, we're, we're a little bit more dependable when it comes to our placement points and things. So, if you want to use your stylist when you're doing this type of thing on the Destiny, you can very easily. You can also, of course, use our mouse. And again, you guys know I'm a big fan of the mouse, so it, it gives you the nice little pointer and it's easy for me to control. And I can also control it by holding down on my click, um, like I was showing you on the Solaris. It's the same thing on the Destiny. Now, our different fill options here, or excuse me, our different scan options on the Destiny, the, again, the create line image, I was already telling you, it's gonna try to recognize lines. Create fill image is gonna try to recognize area. This little symbol of the flowers up here is what we're going to use to actually take the picture of our fabric, take the picture of our cupcake. So I'm going to put my cupcake into my machine and we're going to go ahead and click on the little flowers up at the top here to tell the machine I don't want to set any stitches, I'm going to do that manually, but I want to take a picture of what's in that hoop. I'm going to go ahead and just touch the scan option and again it's going to do a scan of our cupcake and it's going to come up onto our screen. Takes a few seconds for that scan and you can see that it has our cupcake up there. Now again the illumination tab that I was telling you about on the Solaris is down here in the corner on the Destiny. So we can make that, um, that design darker or lighter depending on which way we click on this. Um, again, these are going to be my line fill options here. I'm going to just click on this. Remember, um, this is a huge difference on this machine. Um, again, on the Solaris we had a whole bunch of different fill options here. The only ones that we have on the Destiny are our satin fill, a running stitch, a bean stitch. This um, I'm actually going to use the candle wicking stitch for um, this cupcake here. We're going to do that um, in place of the frosting and I'm going to do the satin stitch around my the cake portion or the the cup portion of the cupcake. So again we've got all of those different selections. There's not nearly as many of course as on the Solaris but you guys can still do some really cool things with these fill options. I'm going to pick my color and I'm going to pick my point to point tool and again this time we're going to do a satin stitch on this design instead of that blanket stitch that we did on the Solaris. I've got my point to point tool selected. I'm going to then zoom in on this design and again this time on the zoom rather than have the little panning tool I've got a little preview box over on the side here. Right now I'm 200%. Then I'm going to go to 400%. And again, you can see by moving this little red box, I can scan and do that same panning thing that I was doing on the Solaris. So we're going to actually do around our cupcake here. I'm going to just position this. I'm actually going to go up to 800% again on this. So you guys can see. Um, and again, all I'm doing is moving my red box when I want to do the panning. So we don't have to remember to keep on clicking on the point-to-point -to -point tool. I can, um, 
it's always going to be highlighted for me. I'm going to just start it up in the corner here again, just like I did before. And we're going to go ahead and again, you can see, all I have to do is hold my um, clicker in and it'll allow me to set that stitch point. I'm also going to show you with the stylus because the stylus is kind of a, a cool option also. So with the stylus, all you have to do again without taking your stylus off the um, screen, just get that stitch point set where you want it to. And then we're going to move our red box here and move it further down and continue to do that. Now you can see I actually with that stylist I got a little bit off of fabric here. Remember I'm 800% but still I want to make sure that that's okay so I'm going to go ahead and back up just a hair here and we're going to go ahead and try that again. And we're going to scroll down some more here. And we're making them really close because I'm going around that little corner. I'm going to go back to my mouse because I just like it a little bit better from the control that I have with it. Maybe. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and keep on going around the base of this cupcake here. Remember, this is going to be the satin stitch this time instead of the blanket stitch because we're on the destiny. So we don't even have to get it as precise, I guess, as we did with the other one because we're going to have three millimeters that we're going to be able to play with when it comes to our... So we're up to the top here now. Okay, so I've got um, my shape done all the way to the top here. Now you'll notice once I click off of this screen, it will actually not, um, I'm going to undo that here, but it doesn't make me finish the shape on the Destiny. You remember on the Solaris, I actually had to go in and get my no so icon and actually physically finish that shape off. On this one, by just um, clicking uh, back into my preferences tab, it'll allow me to um, it'll allow me to finish that area off and not have to finish or do the no so option all the way across here. So again, that's a little bit of a difference there. Okay, so now we've got our satin stitch all done. And again, I'm going to show you by um, making this so you can sort of see what I've actually got created here. Um, the next thing that I want to do, of course, is our cupcake top. And again, I'm going to actually do that in a um, candle wicking stitch, which is kind of fun. It, it would look uh, like it's a decorated top. I should have actually done that on my other one too, I think, because that that's kind of fun. So let's go ahead and we'll pick the candle wicking stitch here. We're going to pick again a different color and we're going to go ahead and do the top of my cupcake. Again, I'm going to blow this up a little bit so we can actually see the edges pretty well. I've got my uh, point to point tool. I'm going to start again at the top of my design and I'm going to go ahead and digitize around the top of my cupcake. So you can see how easy and fun this is. And again, I just sewed out the one that we did on the Solaris and I think you guys are going to like it. It's kind of kind of cool. And best thing is I didn't have to do it by hand. but everybody thinks he did it by hand. And again, you can see by holding that 
mouse click in, it gives you control over where you want to place that stitch so you can get it close to the edge of that fabric like you need it to be. I'm going to continue to move down here. And you can get sort of the point here. We're going to continue to go down the edge. there again. And we're back up to the top of the cake here, or top of the frosting. Almost there. And again, you can see I backed it off a little bit just to cover that circle a little better. And again, that's the trick to this is just make sure that you don't get overzealous on that mouse. Just hold on to it, that stitch, until you get it exactly where you want it to be. And then we get close to that edge and it's going to seal that whole area up. And again, I'll go back to 100% here. And we'll get rid of that illumination so you guys can see what we built. So again, we've got our cupcake all ready to go. Now all we need to do is set the preferences to it. We're going to touch next. And again, first thing that it's asking me about is my, um, is my candle wicking stitch. Again, I've got my machine set to inches, which I don't want because, again, when I'm dealing with stitch length, I want to go to millimeters. Same deal on the um, Destiny. When we're going to the Destiny, you want to go to page 8 on your preferences. We're going to switch it to millimeters. And now you can see that my um, uh, width of my candle wicking stitch is 4 millimeters and the space between them is 1 millimeter. Um, we can switch that if we want to. I'm going to go to 4.5 here. And we'll have maybe a 1.5 spacing on them. We'll see how that looks. Again, you can make and adjust these as you see fit. To get into the satin stitch that we did, I'm going to just click on that. Again, it comes up. We're at 2 millimeters. Again, I want to make that up to 3 millimeters here. And we're also going to change the density of that. And so now we can touch the preview button and it's going to show us exactly how this is going to look. So again, we got a nice little cupcake here with the satin stitch and I like the way that looks. So we'll touch set. And when, once we touch set, it's going to actually convert these, this pattern to stitches. Touch OK. And there it is, we've got our applique all ready to sew out. All you have to do is touch embroidery and it will stitch perfectly around that applique. I want to show you the one that we just did on the desk, or excuse me, on the Solaris. And again, you can see it just does a really, really beautiful job on getting that applique down for you without you having to lose your mind with uh, hand sewing. So again, that's how easy applique is to do on your Destiny or on your Solaris. You can actually just cut your pieces out. Um, again, set the area all on your own. The most important thing on this is again, remember that you have to scan this in as a, um, 
as an illustration design. So remember, that's the most important and the thing that most people make their mistake on is you're going to, uh, instead of touching this button, you touch create line image, you actually just want to touch the little floral button for the destiny owners and the one that says um, image on the um, on the Solaris. So good luck with your applique and I hope you have fun.